Greetings, everyone. Dr. Brian Scott with you. This is Christmas week, and we're taking a break this week, but we're sharing with you some of our very best podcasts from this past year. So I want you to enjoy them over the next couple of days. And then next week is 2024, and we'll be back with some great material for you in 2024. Try your blessed. See you next year. Greetings, everyone. Dr. Brian Scott with you. We are continuing our study on Revelation chapter 20 in our Insight to the End Times uh, series here. Uh, we have already seen in Revelation chapter 20, as I shared yesterday, that uh, Satan himself is bound for a thousand years in a bottomless pit. And it's shut up and it's sealed so he cannot escape nor can he deceive anyone during that thousand year period. We've also seen in, in verse number four, that all the saints, all the believers who were uh, beheaded or martyred during the tribulation period because they refused to submit to the beast and they refused to take the mark of the beast, they are rewarded, they are resurrected, they're going to come back and be with Jesus and they will rule and reign with him for the thousand year period. So they're receiving their rewards for having stood tall in the face of danger. Today we're going to pick up in verse number five in that chapter. And in verse number five, it indicates to us, if I allow me to read that to you here, it says, the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. The rest of the dead, that means that all of the, the individuals who have died, all the unbelievers, the sinners, all the uh, um, deceivers, everybody who followed Satan or refused to follow Jesus, they're going to remain dead wherever they are. They're going to remain dead in that location until the end of the thousand year period. So they are not going to be on the earth or what, whatsoever. Praise the Lord. Then in verses seven and eight, let's pick these things up. It says, when the thousand years have expired, now, this is really interesting. When the thousand years have expired, Satan will be released from the bottomless pit, from his prison. Verse 8, he'll go out, and guess what he'll do? He'll deceive the nations, which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle. So he's right back to where he was thousand years before. So at the end of the thousand year millennial reign of Jesus Christ, the scripture says that God in his infinite wisdom releases Satan one more time to see whether or not he can deceive people into following him rather than the Lord. So it says that he gathers these people together, these, these new converts, he gathers them together. Verse eight, whose number is as the sand of the sea. That tells me that it's not a small number. That tells me that he will be effective once again in convincing people to follow him and defy or deny God and Jesus. Verse 9, they're going to, they went up on the breadth of the earth and they surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city. That's Jerusalem. And fire came down from God and out of heaven and devoured them. Well, I say praise the Lord. Amen. Um, Satan, loose for a thousand years, comes back. He gets as many as the sand of the sea to follow him. He comes up against the holy city. He encircles the saints, and God says, enough is enough. And he sends down fire out of heaven and devours them. Verse 10, the devil who deceived them, he was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are. See, the beast is the Antichrist, the Antichrist spirit as well. And that's where they were cast into the lake of fire and brimstone back at the end of the tribulation period. So now a thousand years later, they're being joined by Satan. And here's the last statement in verse number 10. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Wow. Wow. Now, this is an amazing thing to me. What's going on here? In the tribulation period, 
we have the mid-tribulation saints who are an innumerable company. It's a massive number. It's beyond, beyond counting. I, I take that to mean that these are the, the believers who were like the five foolish virgins. They missed the pre-tribulation rapture. They weren't ready. They were careless. They were, uh, they were indifferent. They were, they were just living life as if there's always going to be a tomorrow. So the pre-tribulation rapture comes along and the blue ribbon sheep, the 24-7, the sold out to Jesus, the God-possessed believers are the ones who are raptured. All these others all of a sudden realize, uh-oh, we missed it. We better get our life turned around. We better get ourselves into a new state of repentance and forgiveness. The scriptures in Revelation 7 say this, they wash their robes white in the blood of the lamb. Wow, so they're going to be gone. Then the 144,000 Jewish men who were witnesses in the first portion of the tribulation, they're going to, going to be raptured. And, and so now we have individuals who are ministered to in the second half of the rapture by the angels and by the two witnesses. Many of them, get saved. Many of them don't get saved. Many of the saved get beheaded and or martyred. But by the time we get to the very end and we move into the, into the millennial reign of Christ, we have, we have saved people. We have unsaved people. We have a time which we'll study to show that the thousand years is a time of peace and harmony. But it still means that we got people who were born during that time period so we've got more and more and more people, some saved, some not saved, some neutral. So the, Satan's allowed to come along and test everybody. And it sounds as if he's pretty successful, but God's even more successful. He wipes them all out and he kicks Satan into the lake of fire and brimstone and he'll be tormented day and night forever and ever. Wow, isn't that powerful? We're gonna pick up some more of our study in Revelation chapter 20 tomorrow. I hope to see you then. Thanks for joining us today.